Udi Jidema Foundation held its fifth public lecture series of 2017 to discuss the theme, The Challenge of Economic Growth in Nigeria. The event was well attended by relevant stakeholders from various sectors of the economy. The chairman of the occasion, Malam Mohamed Hayatu Dean, OON, gave the opening remark. The distinguished guest lecturer, Professor Kinsley Chiedu Mogalu, OON, founder and president of the Institute for Governance and Economic Transformation and former deputy governor of Central Bank of Nigeria, took to the podium to deliver his presentation. Let's be very clear. It's time for us as a country to stop underestimating the sheer scale of the challenge we face in achieving economic growth. We do not have a mere economic meltdown or a mere economic slowdown. We do not even have a mere recession. We have an existential economic crisis that could eclipse the future of our children. Given our rapidly growing population in a competitive world economy. If we do not get serious about the management of Nigeria's economy. That's the first thing I want to say, to set context. The second thing is that we need to understand that economic growth is not the same thing as economic transformation or economic development although these two things are related. We therefore miss the mark completely, in my view, when we keep focusing on GDP growth numbers. I'll speak about this a little bit more later. But I think it's time Nigeria's economic policy focused in a holistic manner on economic development and transformation. Third, Nigeria has not achieved qualitative and sustained economic growth because we do not have a philosophical foundation or vision of development. If you have no compass, you have no direction. Fourth, the monster of millions of young men and women with no jobs today is a fundamental threat to Nigeria's future. But we can defeat it with the requisite political will, economic know-how, and strategy. Fifth, it is time all of us realize that Nigeria will not achieve economic development and transformation on the current trajectory of our politics. The present political leadership class in Nigeria simply does not have the skills and the background that are fit for purpose. It is time for us to bring in technocratically competent and visionary political leaders to reposition Nigeria's economy for sustainable growth and transformation. You see, when you focus on natural resources as your fiscal policy, how to distribute the rents of natural resources, some things begin to happen. What happens is that a gatekeeper state develops. The natural resources become the gate, and everybody wants to be the guardian of the gate. Everybody wants to be the gate man. And all the action, politically and economically, begins to take place at the gate. And that's what we have in Nigeria. Nigeria is a classic gatekeeper state. Everybody wants, if the Niger Delta people cough, somebody scratches his head because that's the gate. And everybody is living off what's coming there, from there. That's wrong. Shouldn't be the case. So the failure of fiscal policy has had a lot of consequences for us. We have not been able to achieve sustainable economic growth because of it. We have seen a hemorrhaging of potential savings that go to the maintenance of a massive bureaucratic state the state is bloated in Nigeria because of the failure of fiscal policy. And we have between 70 to 90% of federal budgetary revenues going to recurrent expenditure. Third, Nigeria has been afflicted by a very high degree of macroeconomic instability 
because of a failure of fiscal policy. Fourth, fiscal management incompetence has resulted in increasing levels of foreign and domestic debt. Someone said, blessed are the youth, for they will pay the national debt. <laughs> so our young people <laughs> are the ones that will pay the price for all these debts that are being contracted today and are being rationalized. But at the end of the day, if we manage our fiscal policy well, the increasing foreign debt that we are entering into is absolutely unnecessary. And that is through effective taxation policy, not by increasing taxes, but by effectively collecting taxes throughout the economy. And we'll come to that uh, here in a minute. Now, the fifth and final foreign uh, fiscal policy mismanagement consequence, and this is largely under the influence of the country's political leadership, is that it has had very negative consequences on monetary policy. I was in the central bank. When you have something called fiscal dominance, the government is busy spending on salaries, spending on recurrent expenditures. This is what drives inflation. And when inflation is driven in this way by the actions of the government or the policy oversight of the government, the central bank's mandate is price stability. Therefore, the central bank has no option but to establish tight monetary policy. They have no option but to increase lending rates because inflation, if it is allowed to continue, is the worst tax on the poor. So I want you to um, understand the central bank when it, you have a high interest rate. They, they are reacting to somebody else's failure. They are reacting in the manner that their mandate requires them to. So hopefully, of course, lending rates will come down. But if fiscal policy is not fixed, it becomes difficult for central banks, for the central bank to achieve this type of monetary policy easy. The reason we are having uh, foreign exchange problems is simply because, again, we are not uh, looking at our economic growth in a holistic way. If you continue to depend on one commodity, you will always have this type of forex problems. Because when the prices fall, the value of the Naira goes south. What supports the value of the Naira is the price, is, is the price of oil. In economies that are structurally sound, that is not the case. What supports the value of their currency is the volume and the earnings from their exports of value-added products. Let me now talk about political leadership and economic growth. There is no question, and this is the main point of this lecture, there is no question that the massive political uh, economic contraction that we have suffered in this country is the result of cumulatively bad political leadership. Our political leadership class is simply not able to fix the economy because they do not have the skills that are fit for purpose. Look at all these things we are discussing today. If somebody has spent his career distributing bags of rice for elections or hiring thugs, how is the person going to be this, do you think this is of interest to such a person? Meanwhile, there are the people who are ruling you. So how do you think you can become, how do you think, how do you think you can ever grow under the so-called leadership of such persons? So the first choice is obviously you must look at the political leadership and change it if you want economic growth. Professor Mogalu speaks further on Nigeria's economic growth and the current ERGP plan of the federal government. Well, I think it's, 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 a, it's a good effort, um, but I'm not sure it goes far enough in terms of what we need. Um, it's also a little bit short term. It's to 2020, if I, if I, you know, and that's not enough time for um, the lag effects of the correct economic policies to take to take you know, to, t to come out, yeah, to take place. So, so that's my, my thinking. I think we need a much more comprehensive and more specific type of plan. That plan is focused a lot on economic growth. That is GDP growth. 
And as I've explained in my lecture, that is not the same thing as economic development, let alone economic transformation. So there needs to be a combination of things that will create economic transformation in Nigeria. And key critical is to develop an innovation economy, to develop an industrial economy. Uh, and that's more important to me than GDP growth numbers. In any event, those things will bring about the GDP growth numbers, but we need a much more inclusive type of economic growth. Not to say, oh, we've attained 7% of GDP growth, we have achieved our target. How many people are included in this? How many people have jobs? These are the things that really matter. There are 30 million unemployed people in Nigeria, and that, job, that whole situation must become our job number one. And I'm not sure that the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan focuses enough on that. I believe we should move more towards rural-based economic development. We should give incentives to businesses that set themselves up in rural areas versus urban areas. This will also help to address the unemployment question. We need to work more on financial inclusion. There's too much financial exclusion in Nigeria. 77% of bank credit that went out in this country in 2015 went to Lagos State alone. That's not sustainable. That means the rest of the country having 25%. So, so we need to, and then we need to, um, you know, diversify the economy, not in the production of primary products, but in value-added complex products and then export them. This is what, and then of course, as I said, inclusive growth. You can't achieve it if you do not create the environment that creates jobs. And then you have to ensure the productivity of those jobs. How do you do that? You change the educational system to increase and improve the skills, the technical and vocational skills of Nigerian citizens. That's what's going to lead you to larger productivity growth. Professor Pat Utomi, Chairman, Board of Trustees, had a few words to share with ProShare Web TV after the keynote speaker's presentation. The Godi Jidema Foundation uh, was set up in the memory of uh, architect Godi Jidema and over the years has had these biannual uh, public lectures to raise the quality of conversation in the public space. And uh, today the subject was uh, economic growth in Nigeria and the speaker was uh, Professor Kingsley Morgalu, who was Deputy Governor of the Central Bank and uh, has been teaching at Tufts in the U.S. in the last uh, two years. Okay, so what are the major takeaways? The major takeaway is that we need to rethink how we approach development and that leadership is critical to that process and that the leadership has to have a world view that people then own and helps uh, set a tone for where we go. It is believed that the implementation of the recommendations by the former deputy CBN governor could engender more rapid economic growth, development, and ultimately transformation. From this thought-provoking annual lecture, it can be surmised that Nigeria's challenges of economic growth are surmountable, especially if the public and private sector forge a stronger partnership. Thank you.